In the next two lessons, we are going to have a look at how we can apply differentiation to real life situations. And today we're going to have a look at rates of change and motion. The gradient of a curve always indicates the rate of change of that function, and that means that the derivative is always the rate of change. Example 1. The volume of water in a tank changes according to the given formula, where T is the time in hours. The volume is measured in liters. Question A. How much water is in the tank initially? How much water indicates that we have to calculate the volume, and the word initially indicates that no time has passed, so the T value will be zero. So I'm going to take my volume formula and substitute zero in T's place. So initially the tank had six liters of water in it. Question B. At what rate does the volume of water in the tank change after exactly six hours? As I've mentioned earlier, the rate of change is always the first derivative. So here we are going to start off calculating the derivative of the given formula. And that would be minus 2t plus 24. And the question is the rate of change after 6 hours, so t will be changed to 6. Here we will get a value of 12, and this is about the rate at which the volume of water changes, so that will be in liters per hour. If you were to take this formula and represent it in a graph, it will be a parabola where the x-axis is time in hours and the y-axis is volume in liters. And we know that the gradient is change in y over change in x, and that is why this unit will be liters per hour. Question C. At what rate does the volume of water in the tank change after exactly 15 hours? So again, we are going to use our derivatives equation because we want the rate of change, but this time we want the rate of change at 15 hours, so we are going to substitute t with 15. Here we will get an answer of minus 6, and we know that the unit is liters per hour. And here, the negative value indicates that the volume of water in the tank is decreasing by 6 liters per hour. Question D. After how many hours will the volume of water decrease at a rate of 12 liters per hour? Here we are asked, after how many hours, and that means we'll have to determine T. And they are asking about the rate at which the volume is decreasing, which is the rate of change. For this, we know we work with the derivative. They mention that the volume decreases at a rate of 12 liters per hour, and the word decrease here indicates that we are going to work with minus 12 liters per hour. So here, minus 12 will be substituted into the place of the derivative, and then we are going to solve t. So now I can move the minus 2 to the left, and add 12 on the right to get 36. And when I divide by 2, I will find that after 18 hours, the volume of water decreases at a rate of 12 liters per hour. Question E. After how many hours does the volume of water in the tank start decreasing? We've already had a look at the graph that goes with this equation. And now we are asked to determine at what time the volume in the tank will start to decrease. And this will happen just after the volume has reached a maximum at the turning point. So we need to determine at what time this graph will reach its maximum or turning point. And we already know that at the turning point the derivative is equal to zero. So you can always remember that if you have to determine a maximum or minimum, you can always take the derivative and put it equal to zero. So we will use this to determine when this tank will reach its maximum volume. And when we solve t here, we will see that that happens after 12 hours. So the volume of water in the tank will start decreasing just after 12 hours. 
Question F. What is the maximum volume of water in the tank? We just calculated that the maximum volume of water will be in the tank at 12 hours. And to determine this specific volume of water, we are going to take our volume formula and substitute 12 into T. Because this original equation gives you the volume. And this will give us 150 liters as the maximum volume of the tank. We can then also have a look at the rate of change of moving objects. And here the original function will always represent the distance or displacement in terms of time. When you calculate the first derivative of this function, you are determining the velocity of the object and that is the rate of change of the position. And then we can also calculate the second derivative or the derivative of the first derivative and that will calculate our acceleration or rate of change of the velocity. Let's have a look at an example of how this can be used. Example 2. The motion of an object is represented by the following equation where s is the displacement in meters and t is the time in seconds. Determine the displacement of the object after one second. For this question, we can take our given equation and immediately start substituting t with 1 because this equation represents the displacement. So we change t to 1 second and then you will see that the displacement after 1 second is 18 meters. Question B. Determine the time it takes for the object to reach a maximum displacement. So here we need to determine the time, t, for a maximum displacement. And earlier I mentioned that for any maximum value, you can take the derivative and put it equal to zero. And we also know that the first derivative calculates the velocity and here the velocity will be zero because this is the moment where the object is standing still and starting to return to its original position. And when I now solve t, I will see that this maximum displacement happens after 5 seconds. Question c. Determine the original velocity of the object. We know that velocity is the first derivative and we calculated the first derivative in the previous question as 20 minus 4t. We want to determine the velocity when no time has passed, so I can substitute 0 into t's place, and then we'll see that the original velocity was 20 meters per second. Question D. Determine the time it takes to reach a velocity of 4 meters per second. For velocity, we are once again going to work with our first derivative. But here we know that the velocity is 4 meters per second, so we can therefore put it equal to 4. And if you now go and solve t, you will see that the time at which the velocity is 4 meters per second will be at 4 seconds. In question b, we calculated that the maximum displacement will be at 5 seconds. Next, we calculated the velocity, which of course is the derivative or the gradient of the function. And we saw that at t0, the velocity was 20, and at t4, it was only 4. At 5 seconds, for a moment, this object is standing still, and then it starts returning to its original position, and therefore, the velocity will be a negative value. So a negative velocity value indicates that this object is moving in the opposite direction or is moving back to its original position. So if we, for example, want to determine the velocity after 6 seconds, we will see that it is minus 4 meters per second, which means that it is traveling at 4 meters per second in the opposite direction or back to its original position. Question F. Determine the acceleration of the object. We know that the acceleration is the rate of change of the velocity and therefore we are going to take the first derivative, which is the velocity, and get the derivative of that, so we're going to determine the second derivative. 
and this derivative will be minus 4, and the unit here will be meters per second squared.